Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Foundations meta game. Today we are revisiting a pretty popular deck, Blue White Oculus. The goal is simple, get Oculus or some of our other three mana creatures in the graveyard by either milling them or discarding them with cards like Charter Course and then bring them back for one or two mana using Helping Hand and recommission so we not only get around the cost of exiling six cards from our graveyard but also get them in play a lot cheaper which allows us to keep up additional interaction and now with foundations we get to play with kiora as well at three mana a three two when it enters we draw two cards and then discard two cards it's another excellent way to fill the graveyard if we have some of our expensive creatures stuck in hand and then once we enable threshold aka we have seven or more cards in our graveyard once kiora attacks we get to make an eight a legendary blue octopus creature token named Scion of the Deep. So that's going to be an excellent way to not only fill the graveyard but also present an additional win condition for the deck since we're pretty good at filling the graveyard between cards like Picklock Pranksters, Adventure, Free the Fae, milling four cards and then putting an instant sorcery or fairy from among them into our hands as well as founding the third path. On chapter one we can cast an instant or sorcery with mana value one or two from our hand without paying its mana cost and then on chapter 2 we get to mill 4 cards, so that can also be a great way to enable Kiora or just to fill the graveyard to find our creatures to begin with so we can reanimate them for 1 or 2 mana. And then on the final chapter we get to exile an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, copy it and then cast the copy. So that's another way to access Helping Hand and Recommission in case we ended up milling one. And then uh, rounding out the deck, we've got Hotijin as another creature we're interested in either casting or reanimating cheaply, giving our author instant and sorcery spells a one mana discount. I also tried out a Monastery Mentor in this slot in the past, but Hotijin is quite powerful, especially if you've got a build with lots of two mana instants and sorceries that can take advantage of the discount. And then Hotijin also becomes larger the more instants and sorceries we have in the graveyard, so it's always good to mill as many of those as possible using the Oculus's manifest the dread ability when making additional tutus for instance as well as when uh, just discarding cards in general and then we've got some bounce spells as well which are great interaction for all the aura matchups so we can punish their enchantments into the flood maw i'm playing a mix of unsummon as well the upside of unsummon is that we can bounce our own creatures can be good in the face of removal into the flood maw can occasionally bounce non-creature permanents back and give the opponent a fish token so that can also come in handy and then a forest dispersal as another two off this gets a two mana discount if it targets an attacking creature so still good if we're kind of on the defensive and we also get to surveil too which can further fill the graveyard for us and potentially grow hot gin and then as we mentioned helping hand recommission the ways to get our creatures back and then we've got a bit of additional removal with get lost destroying a creature enchantment or planeswalker our opponent gets two map tokens and then chart of course a way to fill the graveyard initially to set up our white reanimation effects but once we start attacking can also just draw two cards so a bit of card advantage and then moment of truth another instant we can cast maybe for one mana with a hottie gin in play can also make sure we put the creature or maybe the instant and sorcery in the graveyard to to maximize those synergies. And then the mana base has four copies of the Meticulous Archive, letting us surveil one when it enters. So that can maybe set up a turn two helping hand or recommission if we get incredibly lucky and surveil a creature into the graveyard. Otherwise, we're typically looking at turn three to set those up. And then we've got a bunch more blue-eyed dual lands. Verge will consistently make both colors and see Chrome Coast untapped in the early turns. So we only need to play two Adarkar Wastes and then a bunch of basics to round it out. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Chart, of course, discard either Oculus or Kiora. Recommission it back on the following turn. So turn three Oculus, not the fastest that uh, the deck is capable of, but still a pretty good rate. Although we are up against the Aura deck, so we will need to draw our bound spells to be able to interact, since they can likely make their creature bigger. It is the red-white variant. And now challenger. Alright, so take three. Get lost is a decent pickup. I think we still chart a course here. And then favoring Oculus over Kiora. And then now with Dispersal we'll have a one mana interactive spell left. Although wouldn't be able to necessarily bounce their creature if it's also got ward two. From Sheltered by Ghosts. Yep, 
Feather of Flight for now. That's fine. Finds a Heartfire Hero, which they can still play. Opponent hits for six. And plays Heartfire. If they didn't play Heartfire for some reason, I might have considered just passing and then keeping up Dispersal Get Lost. Now I think it makes more sense to just uh, get back Oculus, can use Founding as well. Get that going. We'll set up Cura for us. So yeah, we've got a 6-6 six, six Flyer. And then now let Unsummon go to the Graveyard so we can maybe get it back. Kind of expecting removal on Oculus. And then depending on the situation, we can still FRS Dispersal. Demonic Ruckus, I guess that also works, getting past Oculus with Menace. So if they don't have white mana for protection left, this could line up quite nicely. Opponent starts growing Hardfire Hero. The uh, Eerie trigger also enabling Valiance, so that's nice. So this attack implies Monstrous Rage. If I block Scavenger with Oculus and they put the counter here, they can still make it large enough. Uh, same with the Heartfire Hero, which would also deal 6 damage on the way out. So I guess I would rather block Scavenger then. Although if I block both Scavenger and Heartfire Hero, then they have to decide between... Uh, saving the Scavenger or saving the Heartfire, since they already enabled Valiant. And then Dispersal most likely goes for Challenger, but I could also see bouncing the Heartfire Hero now if they commit Monstrous Rage. Yeah. So we'll wait for the enchantment to enter, although I guess I could just Dispersal to not give them the enchantment in the first place, so we take away their choice. So yeah, what happens if we Dispersal, then next turn I get to mill for 4, and then I still have a Get Lost. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. We'll just take 6 from Challenger, and then Oculus I can let go to the Graveyard. And uh, then next turn I can just Get Lost the Challenger before they can protect it. Now when Summon gives us even more tools to work with. Still have to watch out for their Shard Mage's Rescue. So the safest play I can make would just be to get lost. Or I guess Unsummon now would also work. And then I can also deploy Kiora. So then we should have enough blockers where I can afford to start attacking. And then next turn we can keep up Get Lost. Could also see discarding Kiora. So I have an extra lands to maybe put Founding to use. Can recommission back another Oculus or Haughty Jin. And would love to see the Octopus creature token. Right, Challenger's next. And a Monstrous Rage. So we'll have to block it. And they did find uh, Sheltered by Ghosts. Which at least they wouldn't be able to cast. So we're at three. And then get back Recommission. The correct play might be Oculus. The content play is Kiora. I guess even Haughty Jin might be better than both. But uh, yeah, this should be good enough. And then Dispersal I can keep available besides Get Lost. And then hopefully our opponent doesn't concede before we get to see the Kraken. And then now Prankster, we can maybe flip face up. Still have to be careful when Hardfire Hero is involved, since that can still deal damage to us. So they need to give it haste, somehow. Or just block and then pump it, but 
They need to make sure they're also not taking lethal. Scavenger is fine. Probably no reason to turn Prankster face up. Alright, and then we can cast both interactive spells. So one shard and mage's rescue is not going to be good enough. And we get to make a kraken, or rather octopus. Yes, please. So your opponent's hoping to pump hero and then have it die. We're not going to allow that. Right, feather of flight. So in response, maybe just get lost. So we only take one damage. And then we still have dispersal left. Alright, that should be good enough. So yeah, had we gotten something besides Kiora, the game would have been over. But definitely worth it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is not ideal. We're missing a creature to discard to chart the course, and we don't have a reanimation effect. So, I don't know if I want to necessarily keep. I do get to surveil on one if needed, and then with chart of course I might draw into a creature and a reanimation effect, but that's maybe putting a little bit too much faith in our chart of course here. Alright, this is a bit more balanced. So, turn one, probably going for archive. Turn two, founding, playing a free chart of course. Can discard maybe Jin if we have already found a way to bring it back. I think I still want the unsummon, so a line can go. Oh no, opponent's got to duress. So that can uh, potentially take the founding now, I would say. Moment of truth. And this matchup might be fine to keep, especially if we can get a haughty gin out. Opponent's got the bat to take something away. Could just go for the unsummon, but unsummon's not a permanent answer to the bat. Takes her only two drop. So, yeah, I could just archive again and then plan to cast the haughty gin instead of trying to get it back, and then prankster is fine. So we will have ways to fill the graveyard. Annex can start drawing extra cards. Expect him to have removal for Jin. A reason to cast and summon is also to maybe get Jin out of range from a cutdown, which right now would still be able to take it out. So maybe if the plan is to not play Haughty Jin yet, instead Moment of Truth, which can hit an extra land, and then next turn I'll be able to play Jin and Prankster in the same turn. Could have also cast it before playing a land in case we found Sea Chrome Coast. But yeah, a lot of options here for sure. But uh, playing around cut down seems worth it. Opponent's got the Blood Letter. That one's potentially worth bouncing before they get the extra Annex trigger. So, how to sequence now? I think it's still Moment of Truth since finding a land would be more helpful. And then Oculus. I'm not close to casting, so that can go to the graveyard. And then Unsummon Bloodletter. And then we can double spell Haunty Jin with Prankster. Wouldn't quite be able to play Founding for one mana here. So yeah, we're out of range from Cutdown. And then hopefully Prankster can find more goodies. Put on just replaying Bloodletter. Still effective, but at least doesn't remove the Haughty Jin. And then now... Charter Course is draw two. That's pretty good. And then hope to find more interaction later. 
and a recommission perfect so that gets back oculus so now we're talking might be worth it to play founding two while we're at it and then play recommission get back oculus attack chart a course and then i'll still have a mana left And perfect, found two bounce spells. So that's all I could have asked for. Opponent has removal for Oculus. Anoint exiling it is pretty effective. That happens. Can maybe find another Oculus here. We don't. So if they have another removal spell for Hotigen, things get a bit more ugly. That opponent's got Slasher, that's fine. So we'll bounce Bloodletter. And Prankster was a good pickup, can mill myself even more. So opponent's at 15. Let's see what the Prankster finds. Bunch more haughty gins. Dispersal, the pickup. So yeah, if I were to play both bound spells, we don't quite have lethal yet. Although we're getting very close. I guess never mind. Dispersal could surveil some uh, more spells into the graveyard. I think I'll actually start with dispersal on charter course. Or rather on Deep Cavern get back charter course. See what we surveil. Helping hands would be fine to cast since that gets back a haughty gin. But can I go for lethal here? So helping hands, dispersal go to the graveyard. This goes to 11. And then, yeah, let's say I keep land on top. I could chart a course into it and then still into the flood maw. So that's one, two, three, four. That should be 15 exactly. All right. So yeah, keep line on top, chart a course into it, and then we know we can into the Flood Maw, Bound Slasher, and that's 15 exactly. Alright, we found the line. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems functional. Interaction on one, founding on two, playing prankster, and then we'll already have enabled Kiora for the most part. Put on blue green. Also looks like a graveyard deck. So yeah, we have double helping hand in the meantime, so milling a creature would be fine. And pick up Maybe a moment of truth, even though Charter Course lets me bring back Kiora for one mana. I think just casting Kiora would be fine. Although, yeah, maybe it is fine to Charter Course and then Kiora helps us set up the second helping hand. Might also mill a creature with Chapter 2. Opponent's good Jace. So we do have to be careful that we don't mill ourselves too much. But yeah, opponent's gonna mill themselves and see Whale of the Forgotten, Omniscience, so that's what they're trying to set up Terror Tide as a sweeper. Yeah, I don't want to mill the opponent necessarily either. Alright, so did not find a land, so that could be a problem. So it is just Charter Course, found Seacrum Coast, and then I may as well go for Kiora here instead of Haughty Jin. Since Kiora's already quite threatening by herself. And then now I can discard Haughty Jin to next turn get back with another helping hand. And might want to get rid of one of them. Since we already have recommission and another helping hand in hand. And then into the Flood Maw, at least a way to bounce a non creature permanent back if needed. If 
We're now going to deadweight Kiora to take that out. Deadweight a permanent that still contributes towards some of their cards like Whale. Opponent now running out Jace. Gonna keep milling themselves. Alright, so nothing we want to bounce with into the Flood Maw. Instead, Helping Hands. Go for Haughty Jin. And then we can recommission Kiora so it doesn't die to another Deadweight. Could also play Founding. Which then plays recommission. Yeah, there's no additional creature I want to return. Plus, we need to watch out for sweepers. So that's back. And keeping founding plus prankster seems good. May not need a Pharaoh's dispersal. And then what else? Maybe another helping hand can go. Since founding can always get it back. Yeah, I think into the flood mask is going to be useful. Could also ditch founding because we can end of turn prankster if we don't need to bounce anything. So I may not have time to deploy it. Alright, and then pass it back. Let's see if Kiora gets to attack, or if our opponent's got an answer. 35 cards remaining, just making sure we don't die to another Jace. Opponent gets back Omniscience, alright, so I will be able to bounce it after they cast one spell for free. And it's another Omniscience, alright, that's how you beat the bounce spell. Just casting another Omniscience, and now there's no point in bouncing anything. Do you have an Atraxa left as well? You do, alright, that's probably game over. Yeah, but they only had one Omniscience, we might have been able to slow them down enough. Atraxa finds another Jace, that can potentially start milling us now. And then Squirming Emergence gets back Jace, so that's mill for 30. And then three more, so I would have two cards left. That's not a lot. And then I guess Overlord, they can also use to get back Jace. Yeah, so that should do it. Good game. Invasion of Tolvada will do it too. So yeah, they've got plenty of redundancy here. Not seeing a ton of white mana for the invasion. So it might just be a couple planes and a Fabled Passage. Haughty Jin is getting nice and large, but yeah, Overlord will get it done. So not a whole lot we could have done about this, other than having counter spells in our deck, I guess. But uh, yeah, overall this matchup is not particularly popular in the best of one ladder. Part of the reason, probably, because it takes a lot of rare wild cards that you can't use elsewhere. Good game. Take our draw step, and that'll do it. Sadly, never got to attack with Kiora. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems promising. If we get incredibly lucky, Archive can mill a 3-mana creature, so we can bring it back on turn 2. If not, Prankster can likely set it up. Another Prankster I'll keep. Put on black-white. They're maybe considering a Duress. Or they have multiple 1-mana creatures, so it's gonna be a Rune Lurker Bant. So, black-white Bants. Alright, we'll pass. Prankster as a 1-3 can also get in the way of the Ruin Lurker. Would still rather use it to fill our graveyard and hopefully find a creature we can bring back. Could see Deep Cavern Bats, but it's going to be an Amalia instead. Alright, so that's going to 
get to explore here. Finding a fabled passage. And found a hardy gin, so that's excellent. And since we already have Prankster, maybe try Moment of Truth now. Play the Seacrow while it's untapped. And then, if I Helping Hand, I can still play two spells afterwards. Even though Hardy Jin won't be able to block. So I could also see the benefit of Recommission here. And then I can still play one spell afterwards. But we can also expect our opponent to have removal. So maybe I do start with a Helping Hand. They might still feel inclined to remove Hardy Jin, but we'll get some value out of it. And then next turn we can maybe recommission something else we put in the graveyard. Could have also main phase, just cast Moment or Prankster to maybe set up recommission. Which I also could have seen being worth it. Now we leave the opponent guessing and keep Floodmaw available. Will be a nice answer to the Sheltered by Ghosts. And now a Deep Cavern Bat. So, do I have a reason to respond? Not really. They likely go for the recommission, but then Prankster can find another one. Yeah, we'll let that resolve. If they take Prankster, maybe Moment of Truth can put a creature in the graveyard. And we always have Into the Flood Maw to get our card back. Alright, opponent takes the Bounce Spell, so that also makes sense in a way. And then may as well... Start with Prankster, if we find a relevant interactive card. While milling a creature, I don't necessarily need to Moment of Truth. And that's exactly what happens. So I can grab the Unsummon. And then... What are we bouncing? Could send Amalia packing, or we can just get her into the Flood Maw back for next turn. At which point, I guess I may as well just cast a Moment of Truth. Finding another moment of truth. Although I can chart a course if I attack. Yeah, that's also fine. And then moment in graveyard for Hardy Jin. Alright, so the plan is to just take it. Then recommission back Oculus. Attack with Hardy Jin, chart a course, and then still have someone left. So I don't think I'll need another Hardy Jin, but want to recommission before attacking to grow Hardy Jin some more. So yeah, a lot of options with this deck, especially with a discount from Jin. So yeah, do I want to unsummon the Deep Cavern Bat? Not really. I'll just char a course now. And find even more bound spells. Alright, so... Oculus finds another Oculus, so we can turn that face up. So yeah, Sheltered by Ghosts is not looking great. They might have removal for Oculus. At which point we can still bounce some of their creatures. But we can also take it and then flip face up. And that's still probably a race we're winning. Can also bounce her own creature and then replay Oculus. Alright, so start with the Unsummon. Before it has Ward. Or well, Wards pay two mana, still have to pay three life. So that was a pretty efficient answer to their Sheltered by Ghosts. They still don't have a good attack. And now a Lunar Convocation. Not looking too impressive here. So yeah, we can pretty quickly turn the corner. Might have been fine to just bounce the Deep Cavern Bat and get our other bounce spell back. Now we're looking at... Turn this face up, attack. Could have also waited till after blockers were declared. Uh, let's see, I don't have lethal right now, do I? I guess had I bounced both of their creatures, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, had I just bounced both creatures, this would have been lethal already. 
but I don't mind dragging it out one more turn. So yeah, the play would have been end of their turn, bounce Deep Cavern Bat, untap, bounce the Ruin Lurker, can still turn this face up, so we had plenty of damage to spare. Sometimes when you're too far ahead, you start playing a little bit more sloppily. Whereas when you're super far behind, that's when you gotta tighten up. But yeah, I don't expect any board wipes out of this deck. And still have plenty of leftovers. Alright, channelers next. Can be bounced if needed. And Deep Cavern would put him to 7. I mean, still very dead. But sure, we'll bounce it. Opponent gets the bait and scoops it up. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Just waiting for one of our reanimation effects to bring back Oculus. Can Dispersal turn one if our opponent's a very aggressive deck. And then Founding casts either the Prankster's ability or Chartercore's discarding Oculus. Put on blue black. Alright, start here. And then. Yeah, we don't have the reanimation spell yet. Prankster digs the deepest for it. But Chart, of course, guarantees that we have an Oculus in the graveyard. So I think I still start there. Alright, and then Oculus can go. And then if we draw land especially, I might still be able to play a 2-mana spell and a 1-mana Helping Hand. We top-decked it, that's nice. Now we do have to worry about counter spells and removal. And I also would like to hit a land drop for a turn, which Prankster doesn't help me with, but Moment of Truth does. So let's maybe start there. And then grab the lands, and then we'll maybe put another Helping Hand in circulation. Although I'll cast one right now, so then I could see the advantage of the one mana bound spell in the graveyard. Alright, and then helping hand now, so even if they counter or maybe take out Oculus, I'll still be able to do it all over again next turn. Right, opponent counters, so a blue black fairy deck perhaps, or maybe just copying the world's list would also make sense. I think Blue-White's slightly favored in this matchup. We can just do things more efficiently. Opponent's got the Demon Package. So we'll Helping Hand again. Bring back Oculus. Even though Kyura's tempting too. But Oculus is a bigger threat and it doesn't die to cut down, so... And then... Probably just gonna pass, planning to use Prankster. Could use Prankster now in case we find another helping hand. Any chance I get lost the enchantments? Seems unlikely. At least right now. And then waiting on Chart, of course, is good in case we can actually draw two with it. And we actually found another helping hand. Do I diversify and get a Kiora? It is a more fun option. But I feel like we'll get another chance to get Kiora back. And for now, a double Oculus beats down pretty hard. Say so yeah, a recommission we can send to the graveyard. And Hadi Jin we can flip face up. So our opponent's got a lot of catching up to do. There's just going to be an Archfiend. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. So how many instants and sorceries do we have in Graveyard? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make it nine. So we should already be attacking for lethal here. If I turn Hadi Jin face up. Take out Archfiends. 
and attack. Alright, so apologies for not getting back, Kiora, but I'll take the W. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got a bunch of bounce spells, but then not much else. So unless we dispersal, surveil some 3-drop into the graveyard to helping hand back, this is unlikely to work out. Although I will say the bounce spells can be very effective, especially in the aura matchup. Alright, this hand seems a bit better. And uh, yeah, this might be a circumstance where Kiora is going to be pretty useful, since we can discard our other 3-drops and then helping hand them back. Still will need an extra land or maybe some interaction in the meantime. Got the third land at least. So now best case scenario, find some two mana card or a bounce spell, another Kiora. Yeah, it's gonna take us a while to get seven cards in graveyard for it. Facing rabbits, double quest caller for now. So we're getting hit pretty hard. And opponent's gonna pump up for two. But yeah, at least Kiora enables our graveyard synergies. And then do I discard double Oculus or one of Oculus and Haughty Jin? It's probably double Oculus since we can actually cast a Jin. Bodon convokes Knight Errant, so at least we're not taking damage right now. And our opponent only found Phineas. So we get a turn to breathe. Now I can Founding play Charter Course, although it's going to be without attacking. Or we can Founding back Oculus with Helping Hand and keep up Dispersal for one mana. Because the opponent's still going to be able to attack past Kiora. I think that's more relevant. And then next turn we actually get to Mill for four, so that might enable Kiora to attack. Which would be exciting. And another Oculus, if you don't mind. So we've seen pretty much all our creatures here. Opponent plays Phineas. And then I'm hoping the attack. Alright, opponent's got another Knight Errant instead. Fair enough. So they are building up a huge board. We'll mill for four, so Kiora's been enabled. And then yeah, if we turn Oculus face up. If Kiora dies to the Knight Errant, it's not a disaster. We'll still get our 8 8. Yeah, it's an interesting spot. Haughty Jin 4 4 at the moment. Could also just attack with, let's say, Oculus and Kiora, get our 8 8. And then I can chart a course, hopefully finding a land. If not, I can still dispersal for one. But uh, yeah, if we turn this face up, I'm putting the opponent on a 2 turn clock. But we do have to be careful that we don't just die to Phineas pumping the team. They might have another Anthem effect. So I think we do want to play it a little bit slow. And uh, yeah, to that end, I'm liking attack with Kiora. Make our 8-8s. And then chart a course. Did not find a land, so that's a little awkward. And add another chart, of course, to the graveyard, so we'll select Prankster. Yeah, we've been a little bit limited in how much mana we have. And a recruit now. Their opponent gets to scry a bunch. They're still not in a great spot to attack, but we'll see. Our opponent does send in Phineas, and uh, I'll just block it with the Kraken. So no real need to dispersal, even though it would let me surveil. Found the land, now we can get back Helping hand. 
which gets back another Oculus most likely. Or we can go for Haughty Gin to get the discount, that makes more sense. So we enable a one mana recommission. Which he gets back. At this point, Haughty Gin versus Oculus. Oculus making an additional blocker is probably more important. We're at 14. And then we can attack with the 5 5 Oculus to enable Chart, of course. Although it's not like discarding a card is a disaster. But I also want to get the game over with. And then we'll have 6 blockers plus a bound spell. Should be enough to survive. And then we have another Oculus waiting in the wings. So we have a decent amount of flyers to close out the game with next turn. Recommission to the graveyard for Haughty Gin. So that can grow some more. Might call her is fine. And a hop to it, making some tokens. Your opponent does get to scry a bunch. But yeah, they don't have lethal, and next turn they're certainly dead to our flyers. Opponent considers an attack, says never mind, and then can turn this face up. And our opponent's very much dead, as we get to a rank up here as well. Awesome. All right, so we got to see this latest iteration of the blue-white Oculus deck in action. And yeah, Cura seems like a natural inclusion as both a win condition as well as an enabler, as we got to see in this last game helping us discard Oculus to set up our helping hand and recommission synergies. So yeah, the deck seems very well positioned right now for the best of one ladder. Got a decent amount of interaction, and bounce spells in particular are pretty well suited for answering the aura strategies, which are among the most powerful and popular in best of one. And the deck also translates perfectly well to best of three, where it's also a pretty competitive option. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.